Coming up on Network Africa. Zimbabwean doctors strike for better pay and condition. Kenyans relieved after government suspends ban on public minibuses in the city centre. Migrants explore new land routes to Europe said to be the only option left. Hello and welcome to the programme everyone, I'm Temiola Shoboele. Zimbabwean doctors have downed their stethoscopes in protest at poor working conditions and poor pay. Not all the doctors in the country are participating in the protest though, just the ones in public hospitals. Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Hospital Doctors Association, which represents more than 1,000 members, said most junior doctors at the five major hospitals had stopped working over pay, allowances and drug shortages. He said that more than half of the public sector doctors have joined the indefinite strike. Many hospitals are already short on drugs and rely on patients to buy them, while local pharmacies are no longer accepting insurance policies for purchases and are instead demanding US dollars in cash. Doctors have been struggling to survive in Zimbabwe after prices of basic goods rose by at least 300% since October. Annual inflation was 20.85% that month, the first time it has hit double digits in a decade. Joining us now is Zimbabwean journalist Nsolati Moyo for more. Hello, Mr. Moyo. Thank you for joining us. First, how are people responding to the doctor's strike? Well, uh, this doctor's strike has uh, a lot of, uh, uh, it has more of a negative impact because uh, most of the doctors have down their tools. They are demanding an increment in their pay because the government is failing uh, uh, to give them a different uh, salary. This uh, affects all the common people who cannot uh, access uh, uh, private medical uh, institutions. So, like, for instance, I'm told that uh, one of the hospitals in Blaue has already closed the outpatient department. They to say they are now only attending only very uh, uh, emergent uh, uh, cases. They to say the rest of the people who are in need of medical attention are no longer accessing that medical attention. So, this is a serious Well, Zimbabwe is heavily dependent on foreign aid when it comes to health care. Has there been any response from donors about the situation in the country at the moment? Usually we receive um, uh, foreign, uh, uh, foreign aid in terms of uh, the medicines that we uh, receive from Western mm -hmm. countries. But in this case now, in as much as the medicines might be there, uh, the case now is if there are no doctors, if there are no uh, uh, medical practitioners, then give the prescription that might not be uh, 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 that might not be of any help to the people. Also, um, if you if you look at the case of this issue of uh, the medicine, uh, most of the people can no longer access those medicines because they are charged in US dollars, and they are only depending on, on on those that are being donated to us, of which they cannot uh, donate enough medicine for everyone in in, in Zimbabwe. So the situation remains becoming uh, uh, difficult and difficult. So we understand that doctors earn about $385 before allowances and are asking for an increase of 25%. Foreign currency is already accepted as legal tender in Zimbabwe and are hard to come by. Are doctors being reasonable with their demands? Yes, yes. I support them in their cause. Look, you can't have uh, a whole medical doctor getting $325. I think, I think that is not fair. That does not really uh, make sense considering that... Uh, uh, Basic commodities in, in Zimbabwe prices have uh, uh, they are going up. Uh, they, are, they, are, they have already gone up. I think by 300 percent now. So if they get 325, it, it is not enough to buy uh, anything. That's very very uh, little because we are facing a very uh, hyper uh, um, uh, inflation. So 325 cannot buy them anything. I support them in their cause. The government must increase their uh, salaries and they must give them uh, foreign currency because right now in Zimbabwe. If 
before in current. You, 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 you just don't have anything. Because our own current, the bond notes, cannot, can no longer buy anything. If you're holding bond notes, it means you have to pay for whatever you want to buy more than three times compared to the person who has the, the, the foreign currency, the US dollars in, 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 in particular. So they must be given the US dollars because if they are not paid in, the, in that foreign currency, it means they are not, uh, they are, uh, they are, the, the money that they are be given in our own currency is just going to be useless. So their cause is very genuine and the, their salaries must be increased. Zimbabwean journalist Nkosilati Moyo, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Moving on now, buses are plying the roads again in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, after the county governor suspended a ban on public minibuses in the city centre. Many commuters were seen on Monday stranded at bus stops fuming about the ban. Last week, city authorities announced that the minibuses, known as Matatus, will have to pick up and drop off passengers at a terminal outside the city's central business district. They said it was to help decongest the capital, where more than 20,000 Matatus operate. At least 15 migrants have died in a boat off the Libyan coast. A survivor of the incident, an Egyptian, said 25 people were on the boat, which had set sail from the Libyan town of Sabrata. They had been 12 days at sea without food and water. The owner of the beach, Alay, found the migrants washing up on the shore near the city of Misrata and called authorities, who brought them to the Red Crescent Relief Services and Hospitals. Residents said 10 migrants appeared to be in very poor health. Authorities are yet to comment any further on details surrounding the event. The Canary Islands is gradually becoming the new route for migrants heading to Europe. According to data from Spain's Interior Ministry, more than 1,200 migrants arrived in the islands between January and November this year. Asani Diallo is making final preparations for a journey he knows could cost him his life. 1,000 miles across open ocean from Senegal to the Canary Islands in a 50-foot wooden boat held together with rusty nails. The 35-year-old fisherman hopes to push off this week from a beach in the capital, Dakar, with water, dried food and potentially dozens of passengers. He just needs two mottos and enough petrol for the week-long journey and also to patch up a three-foot gash in the hull. Diallo is part of a resurgence in African migrants taking the treacherous sea route to the Spanish territory this year in search of jobs and prosperity that they cannot find at home. Many migrants see the chain of islands.